everyone. Thank you so much for joining me in my hemisphere. It is spring time. It is grow time. It is go time. That includes roots. So today I want to point you in a direction to be super vigilant with regards to where your orchid is growing new roots, how you should handle them. If you're anything like me, I am a creature of habit. I don't do change very well and that includes how I touch my pots or handle my pots and suddenly there's a new root growing and you're like you know it's there and then boom you make a mistake. So I'm going to talk you through what factors could influence the dying of root tips especially root tips they are the most delicate and we need to be aware of a few things. I hope that this video helps you and I wish you fabulous root growth in your orchids this coming season and everybody in the southern hemisphere as you're heading into fall and winter some of your orchids may also be growing new roots this could be of help as well i appreciate you all for being here right let's get into it first of all the biggest biggest factor for me is to watch out for my water the water temperature is it too cold is it too hot is it too much or even too little will stop root tips from growing and i'm gonna throw it in there ice cubes do not use ice cubes that factors into too cold that category covers ice cubes included in the water section is dirty water and impurities any impurities in water that have some form of a negative effect when we talk about tap water that would mean chlorine if we don't make sure that we leave our tap water standing for the chlorine to evaporate then those impurities impurities in the water will definitely affect the life cycle of a root tip and that includes rain, acid rain, if the rain has a different pH, the pH, the whole thing works together. If you have too low pH or too high pH, first rain after a long period of time, the pH could be off, the impurities in the air will affect the purity of your water. Your first rain after a long period of time is dirty rain as opposed to after it has rained for several hours and the rain becomes cleaner and the impurities from the atmosphere have been flushed away. Just make sure if you do use your rain water, if you do have your orchids outside and let them get rained on, keep an eye on the intensity of your rain because if it's just a drizzle after an hour, you're gonna have to go back and flush your pots. And if it is a whole deluge, an hour later, it's gonna be absolutely fine. The atmosphere would be clean by that time. Then we come to the point of humidity. Have you got low humidity? Then your root tips may die at a certain point when they reach a certain length because there is no more humidity buffering around the roots. I can only do so much with my setup because I'm in Lekka and self-watering and the Lekka gives me a lot of humidity around the pot of the orchid but it doesn't necessarily extend the humidity that much further. Now my shelves are pretty crowded so I do have a little bit more of a humidity buffer around the pot and sometimes the root will reach out and go in the direction of the next pot down the row. But I do anticipate it stopping at a certain period of time because I just don't have ambient humidity. So if your humidity is too low, just know that if all the other factors are accounted for, low humidity will stop your root tip from extending. There's also a seasonal break in root growth if it gets too cold for some orchids, if it gets too hot for some orchids. There's a sort of an intermediary phase where root growth is just nuts as part of the cycle of the orchid and we would like to make sure that we keep those root tips growing for as long as possible. But no matter what we do, counting all the other factors and leaving them out of the equation, the orchid will eventually stop growing roots simply because of how her growth cycle is. Doesn't mean the root has died, it just means that the root tip closes off at the edge because the orchid is focusing on something else. Very important if you're growing outside is sun exposure. If you've got the hot sun beating down on a root tip, chances are that root tip is just going to burn off and stop growing. I mean, literally stop growing. It doesn't just even close off the cap of it. It just, that's it, that's done. In all of what I'm saying, it doesn't mean the root won't branch elsewhere based on the season. And if it is an active root growth, speaking of root tips that we see now coming out of our orchids. 
Then there is the point of salt buildup in pots. Be very, very careful with your salt buildup in the pot. We are all eager to get our new growths that we see popping out now to a maximum size. The grow season has begun and we're all gung-ho to get those orchids growing. We fertilize maybe a little bit too much. We mean well, but then we don't flush enough. So there is a salt buildup in the pot. The velamen has a wicking characteristic. It is not just absorbing like a sponge, but you can see how the velamen will draw water even going up towards a root that is poking straight up into the air. And then when it dries out at that edge, there could be some root burn on the velamen. And that is because the humidity doesn't match the speed of evaporation around that root. The brown ring is your warning sign. There's something going on. It's far too heavy on the fertilizer, but if you have to fertilize that heavily, then make sure that your environment has enough humidity to counteract the speedy evaporation and avoid the black ring. If you do not do that, there will be a consistent wicking up of the salts and eventually a salt layer will encrust itself around that root. We can see that in very old and established roots that are already in pots, even though they're nicely buried in the pot and doing their job, the top ones that are at the surface, you can see the velamen has some salt incrustations. Now, as long as it is on the length of the velamen with the rest of the root in the pot functioning properly, it is not killing off the root. We're talking about root tips. If the wicking isn't stopped or if there is an imbalance of fertilizer levels and the lack of humidity, the wicking will keep going up and the salts will eventually show themselves around the top of the root, which will burn the root tip, obviously, and that will stop the root tip from growing. And when I say that, I include any salt buildup on the surface of your media, whether you're growing in organic or inorganic media. Any media with salt buildup at the surface, if the roots are coming out new from the stem and starting to head down into the media, just make sure that there is no salt buildup on the top of your media. And secondly, if you're growing in inorganic media, make sure that the surface of your media is always damp because in my case with LECA and self-watering, LECA has a desiccating effect if not kept damp long enough. It will also heat up in the sun. Ha! Huh. Heat, root tips, not a good combination. Keep those two factors in mind as well. If you're in a climate, for example, growing indoors and you cannot be liberal with misting your orchids during the hottest months of the year, the orchid room has had superb success with putting little pebbles on the surface to avoid any of that dry top layer, allowing the roots time to find their way into the pot without drying off or having the water sucked out of them the moment they touch the lecker. Personally, I have not done that in any of my pots because right now I have time to go around and mist my orchids and things are fine. I might have to do that twice a day just to be on the safe side. And I grow mainly outdoors so I can be liberal with the water. But seeing how the orchid room went about that by putting little pebbles on the surface of the pot, it works perfectly. And root tips just won't desiccate. In many cases, touching your orchid with your bare hands will cause the root tips to also stop growing. Now, I'm not even talking about the obvious accidental crushing when handling the pot, and that brings me back to my orchids and me, creature of habit, where do I touch my orchids, and boom, now there's a root tip there. I gotta get used to changing where I hold on to my pots and how I hold on to the pots. So I'm not even going with the accidental crushing when we handle the pot. That can happen a lot, especially to me. But the mere touch, you see, we have the sebaceous glands on our hands that cause for an oily feel around the hands, even if you think that you have washed your hands. When we touch our face or when we scratch our arm, for example, then we transfer oils onto our hands again and then we go back to touch touching an orchid, a root tip, we brush up against it, even just with a bare arm or with a sleeve of an item of clothing, anywhere where we have to reach or something, the minute that we brush up against a root tip, it will stop growing. Especially with regards to brushing up onto any kind of bare skin by accident, the bare skin will have little bits of sweat on it. We're going into the hot part of the year, so keep that in mind. Even if you're in a greenhouse, you will walk in and you'll be sweating because Hopefully your greenhouse is nice and toasty for your orchids. Our sweat has salts in there. 
and touching very briefly against the tip of a root will stop it from growing. When I make that mistake, I try to counteract straight away to flush that root tip off gently with pure water. Sometimes I get away with it. Depends on the vigor of the orchid and how persistent that orchid is with regards to, no, I don't care what you do, I'm going to grow my root anyway. But more often than not, that root tip will stop growing any kind of abrasion, even if it is an item of clothing. Now, the obvious one, of course, if you snap a root tip. Now, if you snap a new growing root at the point somewhere between the growing tip and the back of the root, then that root tip will probably stop growing as well. Unless the angle is such that the velamen can continue to function around the rest of the root, that the snap is only maybe a 20% or 30% break, but the rest of the root is still somewhat intact, that could still keep that root tip growing, but nye, that is a lucky break. More often than not, you hear that click sound and you're like, ah, where is it? Which one was it? And it's like, oh, can I come back from that? And sometimes you can't. Again, doesn't mean that the root won't be branching elsewhere if that is the characteristic of the orchid and how determined it is to continue its active root growth, even though you've snapped it. But yeah, these are the points that I want to point out to you as we go into the growing season proper, that as the roots grow, be careful with some of these things, be vigilant, we love our blooms, but I think most of us are also fascinated by the root growth of our orchids. So just a little heads up, the roots are growing. Make sure that you know where you're handling them, touching them, with what water you're treating them with, how high are your humidity levels, how high is your fertilizer, in comparison to the ratio of, of evaporation. So yeah, the joy of orchid growing begins, the challenge of it now begins, and let's watch those roots grow and see if we come out the other side of the season without that sound that gives us this feeling of, oh no! I snapped a root or I touched a root and all the other factors that I have just mentioned. I have a playlist of orchid lingo where I do sort of a general overview on all things that we talk about with our orchids. Roots have been covered and the velamen has been covered. So we're getting into more of a deep dive on certain subjects based on the season. But if you would like to go and check out what I have to say about roots in general and the velamen in general, the playlist is linked in the description. Meanwhile, happy growing everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fabulous day. And this time I'm going to say two conditions. Watch your roots. Don't break them. See if that can be your challenge for the season. <laughs> That's always how I start my season. But secondly, please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.